This is a countdown of the 50 most influential people in Anderson's 150-year history, as determined by the Herald Bolton and a panel of local history experts. This is our list. Top 50 most influential people in Anderson's history. And now, numbers 40 through 31. Number 40. Mayor who spurred Anderson's growth in the 1980s, Tom McMahon. Tom McMahon was the uh, perfect person to be mayor of Anderson, Indiana. He ran a business in Anderson for a number of years. He was a street guy. He knew people up and down both sides of the street. Uh, politically, he didn't have a title. He wasn't, he's neither an R or a D. He was, he was Tom McMahon and used people on both sides. And that's the ideal way for politics to work. He was a great example for us in Anderson. Well, the, one of the biggest thing I remember about McMahon that uh, he, well, he was a businessman. He was probably one of the lead businessmen that this city ever experienced as a mayor. And he used his business knowledge to help uh, Anderson be at one of the top cities during that time. Well, you know, at that time we had Del Karimi, Guy Lamp, and probably at that time one of the largest manufacturing uh, organizations in the city of Anderson. Tom McMahon, guy. he was a director of First Savings. I was chairman. And, and uh, we worked together quite well for a long period of time. Uh, he was he was an interesting character when he wasn't home. Uh, he was more sedate, of course, the mayor, Republican mayor here in, in Anderson. A, a, a real character when he wasn't at home. Number 39, donor of land for the city's first hospital, John Hickey. John Hickey and his wife uh, came to Anderson about uh, 1853. They settled on a farm on the uh, south side of Anderson, or what was Anderson at that time. Um, today, it's, uh, the ground is occupied by St. John's Hospital or St. Vincent's Hospital. Um, his wife uh, passed away after a few years, and Mr. Hickey wanted to do something to uh, uh, commemorate her memory and to leave a legacy for the city and so he donated the ground there for the hospital to be built. It was also on his property over in the old Evie's supermarket parking lot that gas was first discovered. The first gas well in Anderson was drilled on his property um, and the well came in on March 31st, 1887 and uh, so Mr. Hickey has had a, a double influence on the city of Anderson through uh, the uh, well that was sunk in his property that produced the first gas well that made this city boom and then his benevolent and charitable uh, donation of his property for a hospital uh, for the city to have. So it would have been the city's first hospital. Number 38, community leader and organizer, Mac Reese. Actually he was the founder of a group called the Concerned Citizens of Madison County. And uh, doing that particular group, they did a lot of issues dealing with the community on a, a gamut of uh, different um, situations. Uh, it dealt with employment, it dealt with uh, uh, activism as far as uh, service in the community. Uh, he dealt with hiring, getting African Americans hired. Uh, but probably one of his strongest stint was his involvement in the political arena. Uh, Mac Reese was the uh, precinct committeeman in the fourth ward who later became the ward chairman. Upon the election of uh, Mark Lawler, Mac Reese was appointed as safety board chairman, public safety board chairman. There it is probably where he really grew. Uh, Mac, uh, like I say, he didn't carry a, a heavy credentials, but he was brilliant. Number. Anderson High School coach and athletic director, Carl Bungie. Uh, Carl Bungie was short in stature, but he was a giant among high school coaches. He coached about everything at Anderson High School, including track, and he founded the cross country program uh, originally as a conditioner, a fall sports conditioner, and uh, he was responsible for it becoming in a full-fledged IHSAA sport. His track teams won four consecutive state titles in the 1940s. His cross-country teams won the first seven and eight of the first 11 
state cross country titles. Carl Bunge was a coach at Anderson High School, mostly known for track, which he won several state championships. But he also coached basketball at the lower levels, a freshman. So I played for Carl Bunge, a no-nonsense coach. I remember the sign in his office, if you can't win the race, make the guy ahead of you break the record. And Eric Bunge was a tough guy. He was, uh, did not uh, take too much off the, the uh, track runners. They worked hard and uh, I always considered him the, the greatest track coach ever in the high schools in the state of Indiana and probably in the country because he had so many champions over the years and I enjoyed working for him as a player and uh, just that uh, I had a great relationship with Mr. Bungie. And after World War II, he went to Europe one summer and he spent the summer with uh, an outstanding runner called Pavo Numri. And when he came back, he worked his, uh, his uh, cross-country teams. Um, and I think they won 13 state championships in a row. It was just phenomenal the way that they ran. And there was a, lot, a lot of it was uh, the, what he learned from Pavo Nunnery. And, um, and he, uh, he, was a, he was a great track coach. Number 36, businessman and innovator, Myron Reynolds. Myron Reynolds' claim to fame is the uh, Reynolds gas regulator. When natural gas was first discovered, they pumped it out of the ground into pipes and they sent it on its way to people's homes and businesses, but the gas needed to be regulated. Free-flowing gas was not a good thing. You needed to be able to have some kind of a regulator, regulator on it so that the gas would be efficiently used in homes and businesses. And Mr. Reynolds, with his company Reynolds uh, Gas Regulator, developed a gas regulator that was known worldwide. And his, um, his product brought all kinds of attention to Anderson, Indiana, because of this gas regulator. Um, the Reynolds family uh, was involved in other businesses in Anderson, but Myron Reynolds and the Reynolds Gas Regulator go down in history as one of the great inventions for the city of Anderson. Now, a word from our sponsor. When we come back, numbers 35 through 31. The Top 50 Most Influential People in Anderson's History video series is sponsored by Loose Funeral Homes and Crematory. Family owned for three generations since 1979, Loose Funeral Homes and Crematory is everything you need in one location. Loose Funeral Homes and Crematory is located at 200 West 53rd Street in Anderson. Visit loosecares.com for more information. We're counting down the top 50 most influential people in Anderson's history. Here are numbers 35 through 31. Number 35, community leaders and athletic stars, the Julia Streety Lewis family. The family has just been tremendous, tremendous people. Julia did a great job. And uh, of course, her boys, her three boys, were tremendous basketball players, did a great job in basketball. And they're uh, top uh, citizens. And then going back to the family, back to her father, he lived across from my mother and he would always be over at my mother's house to ask her if she needs her snow off of the walk or anything he needed. Just that uh, just she came up uh, through a great family and, and she uh, herself was a tremendous, tremendous lady. Number 34, community volunteer Marietta Wright. Marietta Wright worked at the Geeter Center for over 30 years. She was in charge of the girls' department, programs for young girls, Girl Scouts, Brownies, oh, the list is endless. I did a little research on her not too long ago, and I was very impressed with a lady who'd never been to college, but she had the intelligence and the fortitude and the desire to help children. Uh, but Miss Mary the Wright would go down as probably one of the most influential people who helped with youth with a lot of youth across that. A lot of your leaders who are, grew up today have been touched by uh, Miss Marietta Wright. Marietta Wright, uh, that was, she was from the Clemens family. And uh, Marietta brother Frankie played on the Anderson State Championship team in 1937 in basketball. And then I got to know Marietta when we was in school, went to Shadeland together. And uh, then later in, in life, uh, when I was executive director of the Geeter Center, Marietta Clemens volunteered her time, 
down there work with the young people and she was down there every day doing something to help the young people so she is one person that's done a lot for the young girls in this city number 33 founder of the christian center lloyd lambert now lloyd lambert is a quiet hero a minister who did not have per se a church every place was his church uh, lloyd lambert started the christian center taking uh, men off the street who had no home, no place to go, uh, and through service to them, he preached the gospel. And I mean he was a strong uh, advocate of the Christian faith. The Christian Center has been there for years and still is, although Lloyd Lambert is deceased, uh, his name is connected to the Christian Center uh, forever. His son Toby uh, continued to work for, for many years. And Lloyd Lambert is still honored to this day in various settings because of that. Number 32, Civil War hero and renowned businessman Thomas Stilwell. Thomas Stilwell was a man of great influence in Anderson in the 1860s. He was a, a Civil War a veteran. Um, certainly he was loved by his uh, uh, soldiers who served under him, uh, a sterling example of this love is uh, he was given a watch in appreciation by members of his regiment. The watch in 1860 cost $400. That's a lot of money for a watch today, but in the 1860s that's a great deal of money. When the war was over, he went into private business and he opened a hotel in downtown Anderson called the Stillwell House. It sat on the northwest corner of 9th and Main Street. And he operated the Stillwell House Hotel, which was one of the finest hotels in Anderson. He was also the head of a bank. And unfortunately that brought problems his way. One day when uh, Mr. Stillwell had a, a disagreement with another banker over a loan that was uh, supposedly uh, a promissory note that was left at the bank and that altercation led to his death. Stillwells had a great influence on the city, particularly on uh, the property that's now occupied by Anderson Country Club. That was the Stillwell Farm. And during the Civil War, um, he offered that ground as a training camp for Civil War soldiers. And if you go out to the Anderson Country Club today and you pull in off of Madison Avenue, you'll see a historical marker talking about Camp Stillwell. Well, that's the farm that the Stillwell family let the government use to train soldiers to send them off to the Civil War. Number 31, Anderson University President and Community Activist, James Edwards. I remember Jim Edwards as an active young freshman during my last year at Anderson College. Even then, he exhibited the kind of leadership that showed promise of a bright future. After a career as a pastor and business organizer, he was chosen as Anderson University's fourth president. He would preside for 25 years over the university's growth as an academic icon and visible symbol of higher education. AU's influence beyond the campus itself was marked during his tenure and enrollment grew beyond the 2000 mark. He's representative of a select group of leaders who have brought AU from a small Bible training school to a university with na national recognition. I got to know him when he was president and uh, again a real fine man and uh, although they got a good president coming in, the young man, but uh, they're gonna miss uh, President Edwards, because he was an outstanding individual, did a lot of great things uh, for the college. He brought the balance, again, as John Morrison had, he brought the balance of the education, uh, higher education, and the Christian faith, excuse me, Christian faith, where uh, Ed, uh, Dr. Edwards, great speaker, outstanding preacher, uh, community guy, he was involved in all sorts of things in our community and uh, the hospital boards and uh, very special Olympics. He did a lot for that and uh, James Edwards uh, has retired but he left a great legacy behind him. That's it for numbers 40 through 31 of the top 50 most influential people in Anderson's history. Visit HaroldBolton.com to see the rest of our list.